Just as a heads up, if I don't do much with this arm, it's because I fractured it filming another YouTube video, so you'll see that one soon. Make sure you're subscribed. <laughs> Since I started learning Blender, everyone keeps asking me if I'm ditching Maya, if I'm gonna switch to Blender, if I'm gonna go one way or the other. It, no, the answer is no. <laughs> All the 3D tools are fantastic, and they're good for different things, and they're useful in different ways. Don't let anyone tell you you have to choose a software and stick to that software. Most professionals use multiple tools in their workflow. I don't know anybody who doesn't. Batman's got a whole bunch of gadgets in his utility belt, so be like Batman. Use them. So, what's the vigilante policy on 3D animation software? Unlimited. But anyways, there are a few reasons why I continue to use Maya for so much of my 3D work and why I have no real plans of stopping using it for 3D animation. Some of you know that I used to be a trainer at DreamWorks. I worked there for two years and I was pretty much the Maya guy. I was in charge of almost all the Maya classes at the studio. I taught over 50 classes at DreamWorks, a whole bunch of software. Maya was one of them. I was in charge of the entire curriculum as well as everything Adobe and a bunch of other stuff. So I've had a lot of practice with it, but I want to break down very quickly why I started using Maya, why I continued using Maya, and why I'll keep using it today. I feel like that'll cover everything and explain my side of it of why it's my primary animation tool. So rewinding to 2012, I had just finished high school, I was in college, and the big summer blockbuster of 2012, The Avengers. No surprise there that it was very exciting for me and I really wanted to learn how the heck you make that kind of stuff. Because obviously Iron Man, the Hulk, they're not really there. Someone had to make them. How'd they do it and what software did they use? That was the big question I had. And I really had no knowledge of the animation industry or what it took to get into that world. None of it. Lucky for me, Industrial Light and Magic, ILM, was putting videos on YouTube behind the magic. They were showing behind the scenes breakdowns of how they made the movies. It was this one, Transformers, I think one of the Transformers movies, and Battleship, I think? They put those three out there and I watched them religiously. I just kept reloading the video and just looking for all the little details and zooming in and trying to figure out how the heck they put this together. The two things that excited me most were the layer compositing. I know that's not necessarily the 3D animation bit, but I found it fascinating, just the compositing, just taking all the different elements, layering them together and making these crazy compositions. And then every time they would take a piece of 3D geometry and pull it apart and show you all the little pieces or where they had one big set and they you know, place everything down, somewhere in one of those videos it explains that if you want to destroy something, if you want to break something, you've got to make it first. And so everything in there is CG, it's got to be created, modeled, textured, and then so on, right? That to me was mind blowing. I searched like IMDB pages, I looked in the credits of the movie until I finally found like used Maya's, I don't know where I saw, but I found out they were using Autodesk Maya. Didn't know anything about it, but I just started looking for classes. And I found that a community college not far from where I was going to school had one class on like intro to 3D using Autodesk Maya 2011 or something. Look at that logo. It's hideous. I love it. So I signed up, I took the class. It was a general overview of how you would do stuff in 3D. It, it taught a little bit about modeling, texturing, just kind of the whole thing. It gave a general sense of how things in 3D come to be. It was nowhere close to what I was really, I guess, hoping it would maybe teach me, but that's because I expected to start blowing up battleships and making transformers in the first couple of weeks. Obviously, that's not how it works. And if you've been around long enough to watch this video, this very old video and very cringy video, where I break down some of my very earliest animations from that class, it's really no surprise why one of the first projects was a Minecraft Avengers video. Minecraft because it was basic enough I could try to do it, and Avengers because that was kind of the inspiration for getting into 3D in the first place. So why did I start using Maya? Because I saw it was an industry tool. It's what other movies that I enjoyed watching were created in, and so I gravitated towards that software. Had I found out it was a different software used to make these, would I have picked something different? I don't know, because the access to information that I had was also pretty limited. There was no animation YouTube channel about this kind of stuff. There were no online resources. There were online schools, but I didn't know about them yet. I wasn't really aware of any of the stuff, but there weren't any mainstream learning resources available to me. So even if I had wanted to learn a different tool, it's not like I really would have had a lot of places to go. And if you know some of my background, my history from some of my earlier videos, you know that I left the regular university I was going to and sort of dropped out of it and went to a community college in Northern California, which I picked because it had a good computer science program, which was my main major, but also because it had a great media and animation program. And that's what I was secretly interested in trying to learn more about. And guess what software they taught their animation program in? Maya. That's pretty common. Maya is almost always 
the main program used to teach animation in all the schools. And that's not to say that other tools aren't being widely used or widely adopted as primary industry standard tools. Maya has always been a big part of the animation industry for all kinds of different fields within the industry. Well, Blender's being picked up a lot too. Like that's, I'm not trying to say like, ah, oh, well Maya was the only thing and it continues to be the only thing and that's why I use it. Like that's not where I'm going with it. Stay with me. But what made it so easy to stay with Maya is that what little resources were available for me to use to learn, they were almost always in Maya. If it was that rare tutorial I could find at the time that was actually useful, they had one for Maya. When I kind of dropped out of school entirely and switched to an animation school, I went to Animation Mentor. It's an online animation school. If you haven't heard of it or if you've been wondering and you haven't seen my old videos and you're wondering, where did I go for animation training? I went to Animation Mentor. If you sign up, tell them I sent you. It's a great school and they teach and taught in Maya. Now, a lot of people who watch my stuff are using other tools, not just Maya, and they wonder, hey, if I sign up for the school, do I have to use that software? Can I use the one I'm more comfortable with? If you know Blender and you want to know, can you use Blender? And the reason that they would say probably don't animate in Blender, I won't speak for them, but at the time at least that was the rule, is because the mentors, the people guiding you through your shots who will help you troubleshoot, they weren't using Blender. They were using Maya for the most part of their jobs because if they worked at Disney, they actually animate in Maya at Disney. That might be changing in the next, actually might change, I don't know if it's changed already, but I think Disney's switching to Pixar's software which you can't get. Same as DreamWorks, the software, they're proprietary. That's why it doesn't matter what you pick. You just have to get good in general, learn animation, learn the craft. Anyways, I continued learning Maya because that's always what was made available to me. That's always how I was taught and what I was taught. And what's interesting is I actually got this weird, like elitism thing in my head when I was working at DreamWorks. So after Animation Mentor, I started working at DreamWorks and I was teaching Maya and we didn't have Blender at the studio. There was one person who was playing with it and showing cool stuff back when it had kind of the game engine in there, but it didn't catch on and a lot of us didn't really take it seriously because of the whole freeware thing, just thinking like, oh, it's free, how good could it really be? Obviously, it's not really a good way to look at things, but while I was there, I did kind of develop this weird aversion to Blender. And I think it was for two reasons. The main reason why I like wasn't interested was because I had this view of like, oh, well, you know, we're, we're a major studio, like, this is what we use. This is the right way to do it. That's for free. Like that's, you know, not that great. You know, I've seen some of the stuff online, like oh, I'm not gonna use that tool. And that's not good. That's wrong. That's just not a good way to look at things. I think the reason that that, that predicament even happened is because Blender was more accessible. There were more people using it, more people who weren't using it professionally making stuff. And so you had a, a bigger pool of content that was, I guess, beginner level available to see which made it feel like the tool itself couldn't make that good of stuff because most of the stuff you saw was from people who didn't have a lot of experience as they learn. That's how it should be, but that's all you saw. Versus you look at something like Maya or even 3ds Max or like Houdini, like the crazy stuff, you see this work that's just amazing. You don't see any of that beginner stuff because there's a higher learning curve. There's less people using it for fun because you're using it usually in a school context or to get a job. And so you don't usually just see recreational creations in these tools. And so it kind of gave this sense that, ah, well, these are the professional tools. This is how you make the good stuff. And this is the free stuff. Eh, I mean, it's 3D, sure. So that was part one of why I like didn't look at Blender. The second thing is, I don't know why, but while I was working at DreamWorks, something kind of weird happened to me, just like mentally. Before I got there, there was this feeling of like, ah, oh, like DIY, customize, like figure out how to get something done, just kind of guerrilla filmmaking style creativity. I used to do a whole bunch of projects. I'd just kind of take whatever I had around and just mash it together and, and make something because I wanted to make stuff. But when I got to DreamWorks, I was really trying to learn like how, how do the pros do it? How do you do it at a studio? Like what's the right way to do it? And I got so into figuring out like, what's the proper way to go about this workflow, blah, blah, blah that I kind of stopped doing the guerrilla filmmaking stuff and only would do things correctly. It had to be perfect, it had to be great because I, I wanted to kind of hit that standard. It's been about three years since I left DreamWorks and I'm still kind of like recovering from that mentality. I used to just make stuff because it was fun and I didn't really care if it was perfect or what. Now I have this weird like fixation on trying to do things right and do it the right way and it's, it's very annoying because that's not creative. That's just, it's just something I picked up and it wasn't something that like DreamWorks taught me. It was just like this weird thing, I think, of getting into a big studio really early that kind of, 
I don't know. I don't know what that is. But it's kind of like that thing where when you're in school and you put the studios on this pedestal and like you, there's nothing greater than working at Pixar and like, wow, that's the goal. But then if you get there, like that's not the end. There's more to like, there's more beyond that. So you have like this weird pedestal, ha ah, like way of thinking. And I think that happens with like the creative stuff too. You get there and there's this like this way that you see the, but no. No. But there was one good thing that happened as a result of all this. While I wasn't learning Blender, Cinema 4D, stuff we weren't using at the studio, I was laser focused on the stuff that we were using, stuff like Maya. So I got really, really good at it. I understood how things worked on the back end, the, the, the little quirks, the bugs, how to get around stuff. I spent a lot of time really refining how I was gonna work with the tool, which makes it very easy to keep using it. So not that it's like, I was always using it and so I just kept using it. It's a really good tool. Like, people are gonna be mad at me because like, wow, your Blender's a good tool too. Yeah, everything's a good tool. It's fine. We can all like different software, right? This isn't about saying why one tool's better than another. It's that it works really well for me. I really like using it. I love Maya. I have a great time working in it, just like I'm having a great time learning new tools. And there's certain things that for animation, now fast forwarding to now, why is it my primary tool? Why do I keep using it? Why don't I have any plans of changing? Partially, it's habit. Partially it's because I'm used to it, but not in the way that's like, well, I'm used to it, I'll just keep dealing with it. I really like it. There's a few things it does really, really well. I've done some comparison videos that aren't really good comparisons, but some just kind of first impressions videos of Maya versus Blender for animation workflow, where I've showed kind of some of the stuff about Maya that I really like about the animation workflow. There's a lot of small behavioral stuff that to me works really well and then I, you know, it'd be hard for me to break away from those workflows. But more than that, I think it comes down to kind of the priorities of what you want in the things that you make. For example, a lot of people who work in Blender like to model stuff because Blender's a really great modeling tool. I don't like to model. It's not something I enjoy. And so I haven't even bothered to finish the Blender Donut tutorial. I kind of just got bored of it because I didn't want to model. And while I know I should learn how to do it and it's necessary, I just don't want to. There's a lot of stuff you could do with the modeling tools or the sculpting stuff and the brushes. And I mean, there's a lot of things that you can add to your animation with the tools that Blender has to make that really great. In the same way that for me in Maya, the stuff I'm more interested in is like effects and simulation type stuff. I don't need to actually simulate most of the time, but I want stuff that looks like I simulated to make it look like I put a lot of work in, but really I spent 15 minutes doing it. Uh, my video on MASH is a huge part of that. I really like using things that look really complex and get really intricate and just look really cool. A way that I can somehow put a piece of that whole behind the scenes ILM magic into my work without having to spend all the time and all the energy trying to do it the right way. There are some really cool things that I can do in Maya that I have not been able to do in Blender. But where my priorities lie and what I wanna make for me, it's just easier to do it in Maya. I like the way it looks. I like the way it acts. I know the way it works in the software and the way it's organized. And to me, it's just, it's a better workflow for me. But there are things that I kind of hit my limit. I'm like, okay, well now to do more, it, it's gonna take more work than I really want to put in. That part, you know, there are pieces that kind of dip into other software. Where like, oh, this would be much easier if I knew how to do it in Blender, or this would be way cooler if I could just kind of outsource this part to Houdini, which is why I'm learning the other tools. So that ultimately I can do different things in different software and combine them, you know, by taking the strengths of each software and my personal strengths and interests and where kind of my brain works best in these tools and combining them into one final product. And when it comes to animation right now, Maya, I think has kind of the most streamlined workflow. There are enough things, maybe it's just because I'm used to it, but there's enough things that enough of us have been doing for long enough that there's a lot of resources on it. There's a lot of help. There's a lot of support when things go wrong, but also there's a lot of assets. There are more appealing high quality rigs for Maya than for any other application because probably there's the most people using Maya at work and then making stuff at home. Obviously we have a lot of cool stuff coming out like the rain rig for Blender. And I mean, there's, there's more stuff coming out all the time for the different applications, but Maya's kind of always been an animator's tool set and based on the assets that are available, it shows. So with everything we have now, let's say I have to go back. I just finished high school. I'm going into college or I'm at college and I have to choose. I wanna make something in 3D. What software do I learn? What do I do? Do I make the same decision? Do I change it? Honestly, kind of jealous of anyone at that stage because uh, 
I'd probably just learn more than one. For animation specifically, I'd probably still go with Maya because of how many rigs there are, how many videos there are, how much help there is. Your capability to learn character animation by using Maya I think is, is, is stronger. I think you have a better chance of, of getting better with all the stuff that's there currently because of how many other people have been using Maya to develop all that stuff. Does that mean that if you choose Blender, that's a bad thing? No, of course not. There's more and more stuff all the time being created for Blender and I, like, I'm trying to learn it too. I chose Maya because it was the easiest for me to get started and I continue using Maya because I'm good at it and it's easy for me to keep getting better at it versus the learning curve of starting something new. But that doesn't stop me from learning something new, I just do both. I have limited time, so if I want to finish a project, it's better for me to just use Maya because I know what I'm doing. And the time taken to get a finished product is going to be a shorter time versus, you know, having to learn and practice and blah blah blah, which I'm still doing. But that's why there's both. That's why there's multiple. And the feature sets are different between different tools. Animbot exists for Maya, doesn't exist yet for Blender. Hopefully soon, that'd be great. But the point of today isn't to draw those comparisons. It's to say, this is the tool I've been using for forever, and I'm gonna keep using it because I really like it, and I'm gonna keep learning new things because I wanna keep learning. But that's the deal with being an artist. You have to keep evolving, keep growing, if you want to keep developing your skills. Anyways, I'm gonna go ice my arm because it's starting to hurt. Remember to subscribe if you want to find out how I fractured my arm making a YouTube video, and I'm out of here. I'm gonna go celebrate my anniversary. It's our three-year anniversary, so a little staycation. I'll be away from my desk, so yeah, anyway. Have a good one. Thanks for watching. Links to everything down below. Patreon, Twitch, if you want to support the channel, all that good stuff. Subscribe if you haven't. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.